Hey guys, welcome to Digit.in and what we have for you today is the review of the 43 inch full HD Onida Fire TV Edition TV which essentially means that this TV runs on the Fire TV OS, the same OS that's found on Fire TV sticks and before we get into anything, I'm going to give you the most important piece of information. To access the picture settings, you actually have to press and hold the home button for a couple of seconds and then you get these settings and you can go and change the picture and sound settings. So if you're trying to hunt for a settings button out here, it's not going to happen. To know more about this TV and not only this one but others, you can always subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you know when we upload a new video. So let's uh, get into the review of this TV. Now this is the first time we have seen a TV running on the Amazon Fire TV OS but we've all become used to it simply because uh, most of us I presume have used the Fire TV stick in the past. So let's actually start with this remote control. Now apart from the power button which you need to point this remote on the TV to switch it on and off, you could literally just point it anywhere and control it. Look at that, it's not even pointing directly at the TV and I'm pretty sure things are moving in the background. It's because just like the Fire TV stick, this doesn't need to be connected to or pointed at the IR which at this price range is something that's really really good. The other features are pretty standard to what we've seen. You get the microphone button, back home menu button, uh, the navigational buttons, okay, playback controls. There's volume out here which is there on the new Fire TV stick remote. Uh, but the biggest addition is of course OTT platforms directly. Now we have Netflix Prime Videos, Z5 Sony Live. This remote is by far the best at this price point. I mean the only one that comes really close is the Mi TV remote control which is also a really nice minimalistic remote control. But thinking that we really enjoyed this remote control so much, let's talk about one thing that I really wish it had is I don't watch Z5, I don't watch Sony Live. If you watch these services, great. But if these were reprogrammable hotkeys, it would have been really, really cool because I could have put one on, let's say, Hotstar, the other on YouTube, two services that I actually use. But like I said, we're actually really happy with this remote and the fact that we're going so ahead and nitpicking about it just tells you guys and us how much we actually really appreciate it. Now coming back to the uh, TV at hand, this it has a full HD resolution, it is an IPS panel and this is 43 inches. Now if you're someone that's wondering, oh but I can get 4K and I can get HDR, know that this panel is actually really really nice. We really like this panel and we're going to get into the details of that as well. So. Kicking things off with our standard slew of content, now we usually play shows like Altered Carbon which is on Netflix and it's mastered in uh, HDR but you will only see it in full HD out here. Know that we have tested uh, the 50 inches or the 55 inches 4K HDR TVs which are available from brands that produce TVs in this price segment which is the budget price segment and this TV performs better than those. I mean the colors are bright, you can see them in Vivid. This uh, TV has a picture mode called Dynamic and Standard. These are the two I recommend you keep switching between because these are the two modes where you can actually get really nice punchy colors and the darks don't look really that dark but you can actually see details in dark scenes. In a show like Our Planet, the uh, season one episode one which has this beautiful god ray coming in from the clouds uh, in a forest. It actually looks nice and green. The green in dynamic looks a little darker than we'd like it but the saturation is good enough and everything is visible. You don't have these patches of darkness where you can't make out what's there so that's really good. Even if you watch full HD content, if you watch TV shows like let's say Young Sheldon, everything just looks it, it just looks so nice that you think hey this is a great all-round TV and the picture presets are great. There is no crazy motion flow settings, uh, the settings are easy to navigate, the TV is responsive, there's barely any time that we've had a problem with the UI when we're navigating different shows and that's because everything is just built in, baked in, in a manner which is really fluid. I have had this TV crash on me literally twice and that's because I was trying to navigate too much too fast and that's okay. It works as good as a Fire TV stick. When it comes to gaming, again, all our games played up in full HD. The Xbox One X showed us that this is a 1080p TV and it ran all the games in full HD. Again, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is our benchmark for HDR gaming. You can actually see it, what it looks like. It looks absolutely beautiful. And the TV also has a game mode where the picture settings are pretty much the same as standard, but uh, I think they do implement something because the input lag is a little bit less, uh, the controller was pretty responsive when we played games on this TV in the game mode, so that actually really worked. Coming to the UI, now one thing to note is that if you have a Fire TV stick at home, you do get the Apple TV Plus app on that, but on this you don't get it. Why? It's a question for us as well. But apart from that, this works exactly the same as your uh, Fire TV stick does, with of course the only change being one row of inputs. A cool thing is you can actually go back in and change these inputs to let's say a PS4, an Xbox, a set-top box because you could literally just do this. HDMI 2. 
and it's gone on to the HDMI 2 signal. So if you set HDMI 2 as PS4 or Xbox, all you had to do is press and hold the voice button and say that. The voice controls on this TV work absolutely brilliantly to the point where we actually don't have to reshoot any of this because even if I say things like Stranger Things on Netflix and it's just going to open Netflix, it's going to log in and it's going to show me Stranger Things. If I would have said play Stranger Things from Netflix, it would have actually started playing the last episode I stopped on. I could even say something like Cyberpunk 2077 trailers on YouTube and it's going to give me a row of all the cyberpunk trailers that are there on YouTube. I mean, the navigation of the way the Fire TV stick works and that implementation happening on this TV with the fluidity that you are seeing in real time, that is how confidently we can say that this works. It works brilliantly. So by now you actually think that we're in love with this TV and going to recommend it, but hold on. There are two things that we would like to touch upon. First is the audio. The audio from this TV is really, really bad. It is so bad that it forced us to actually Pull out, a sub, pull out a speaker that was lying in office just to use it so we could enjoy this TV. And that's the one place that you are going to really suffer from it. However, note that if you have a pair of Bluetooth headphones, they could be something that's really, really simple lying at home or you could have a fancy pair of Bluetooth headphones. You can connect them to this. You just go into the settings, go into the Bluetooth settings and you can literally pair any pair of Bluetooth headphones with this and watch it so you're not only not disturbing people while they're sleeping, but you get a much better audio experience from this TV. Also, it has enough connectivity options. So coming to that, it's got three HDMI ports, just one USB port, but it's got Bluetooth. It's got 3.5 mm output. It's got optical output as well. It's got antenna and composite. So from an audio perspective, it has HDMI ARC as well, 3.5 mm, aux, 3.5 mm is aux. It's got optical and uh, Bluetooth. So you can actually connect a suite of devices if you have to this to get rid of the really bad speakers that come on this. Lastly, about the build, it's all plastic. We've kept it on a tabletop. It uses one screw per foot. Now that was something that kind of bothered me initially because most TVs use two screws per foot to hold it tightly in place. But the structure of the foot on this TV is such that it has a groove that goes inside the television and that is held with one screw. So if you tighten it really nice and tight, it's not something that's gonna bother you. It's gonna be in place and the wobble is nothing more than what we've seen on other TVs. So as a verdict, what we'd like to say is the picture quality on this TV is really, really good. It comes built in with most of the OTT platforms that uh, you would like to watch. Like I said, the only exception is the Apple TV Plus app, which I don't think you're gonna miss unless you're consuming content on that. Picture quality is great. The UI is fantastic. The remote control is functional and really, really good. Voice commands work like a dream. The audio from this TV is really bad. So that was our verdict. What do you think of uh, the Onida Fire TV Edition TV? Really long name, I wish they would have just called it the Onida Fire TV, but it is the Onida Full HD 43 inch TV Fire TV edition, whatever. Anyway, it's a great TV if you guys want it, with the audio being the only exception. You can let us know what you thought of this review in the comment section below. And for more from the world of technology, you can subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to know when we upload a new video. If you have any questions about this TV, let us know in the comment section. We will do our best to answer them. We will catch you in another video. It's goodbye for now.